University of the West Indies is firstly a university. The university's main role is to strengthen the rule of the rich over the society and to keep down the poor. The university has a role to play in terms of building up a consciousness of the region. The whole thing of conceptualizing, of ordering our experience in some sort of rational way is a responsibility um, that, of course, we cannot shelve if we are serious about development and nation building. Extension of scholarship, knowledge, and understanding. This is the primary role. Any other role must be regarded as secondary, including its social role. The role of a university in any community is to further the educational interests of that community. Educational interests not in the narrow sense of being academic education alone. The university is people serving people. It is not the physical space of the campus that is most important, but the graduates who come out to serve their countries. The graduates who come out to serve their countries. This is the largest campus of the University of the West Indies, Mona, near Kingston in Jamaica. In 1943, the British government appointed the Irving Committee to report on higher education in the West Indies. The committee recommended that a residential university be established at Mona in Jamaica. The site of a wartime internment camp was used earlier as two sugar estates. The artifacts of the plantation era were to become the garden of West Indian intellectual growth. After World War II, the military and their guests moved out of the wooden frame buildings, which were to house the first classes of the University College, an affiliate of London University. October 1948, 33 students were admitted to study medicine. 25 years later, the numbers still multiply. April 1962, the University of the West Indies became a degree-granting institution in its own right. The face of Mona continues to change. Concrete edifices now crowd its 650-acre compound. Student population has grown to more than 3,600, with courses in arts, natural and social sciences, and education. Fourteen governments finance the university. 1950, Her Royal Highness Princess Alice was installed as the first chancellor of the University College. University Forum, a weekly program presented by the Radio Education Unit of the University of the West Indies Extramural Department. 1952, the University Hospital was opened. The same year, the first graduates were awarded Bachelor of Science degrees in Natural Sciences. 1963, Guyana withdrew from the group of governments contributing to the financial upkeep. Evening classes were started at Mona. Non, c'est le moins rapide de tous. 1960, Sir Arthur Lewis became the first West Indian to head the University College. By his use of flashbacks, Robertson is able to trace the present sequence of the novel into a historical perspective. 1968, Dr. Walter Rodney, a Guyanese lecturer in history and a graduate of UWI, was banned from returning to Jamaica by the Jamaican government because of alleged subversive activities. 1972, a strike by the University and Allied Workers' Union led to the closure of the Mona campus. The chapel at Mona began its life in 1799 as a sugar warehouse in rural Jamaica. It was donated to the university, and the building was moved stone by stone to its present site, where it was dedicated in 1960. November 1971, Sir Hugh Wooding, the former Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago, was chosen as the new Chancellor to succeed Princess Alice, who had served since 1950. The Chancellor is Chairman of the Council, the governing body of the university. I came here because I thought I'd find people, more people like myself. It is because I could only afford to come here, you know? If I'd had money, 
I think I'd have gone somewhere else, perhaps. Um, only for one thing, I needed more money. I always try to identify with the Caribbean and with West Indians and with black people. Well, let me say very clearly, of course, that I saw going to UWI as a second choice. Had I, in fact, had a full choice in the matter, I suspect I would not have gone to UWI. I won a scholarship here, and uh, I thought it would have been an exciting experience. Across the West Indian nation states, it is not unusual to see vast tracts of arable land standing idle while we continue to import foreign-grown foodstuffs. We have not been able to channel our brightest minds into the field of agriculture. Because the university is committed to serving the needs of the region, it was natural that in expanding, it would concern itself with providing training so that we can feed ourselves. In August 1960, the Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture at St. Augustine in Trinidad was incorporated into the University College and became the first faculty outside of Jamaica. Students are trained to deal with the myriad problems facing Caribbean agriculture. Drawing on the resources of the old college, the degree program was expanded to mirror all aspects of agriculture in the region. But teaching is not the only business the faculty is concerned with. Banana is one crop that is common to all of us. Small worms called nematodes have been affecting plant yield, and scientists at St. Augustine have been doing research to help combat the problem and rescue the banana industry. People serving people. All graduates in agriculture are exposed to practical farming situations where they not only observe, but perform the chores themselves. acre field station allows faculty and students to do livestock and food crop production research. They must also deal with soil and water management and the conservation techniques. By equipping graduates with the necessary research skills, we hope to help ourselves become self-sufficient in food. This is Cadix George, one of the first graduates from the Faculty of Agriculture. Today, he is the Agricultural Research Officer for St. Lucia. Cadix George is constantly searching for more efficient ways of producing food for St. Lucians. People serving people. When Cadix George attended St. Augustine, it did not look like this. Donations from the governments of Trinidad and Tobago, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States helped create this modern campus. With over 2,000 students in 1974, it now houses colleges of arts and sciences and a faculty of engineering. St. Augustine's library is not unlike the main one of Mona, which boasts an outstanding collection of West Indian publications. Efforts are constantly made to make the university libraries the main storehouse of Caribbean literature. Technological advances demand that man master machines if we are to cope with the changing world. To provide skilled manpower, the Faculty of Engineering was established at St. Augustine in 1961. Students can specialize in electrical, civil, chemical, or mechanical engineering. They must grasp all the new engineering developments while being cognizant of the fact that few Caribbean countries have the resources to satisfy the technological needs of the area. Despite this, they will have to develop better houses and build stronger roads and bridges. It is in chemical engineering at St. Augustine, under the guidance of Dr. George Sammy, that innovative packaging and canning of local foods are being done. Yams, potatoes, and beans are just a few of the food crops that can be preserved to replace some of the foreign foods we now import. Fired and tuned oil drums are one trademark of Trinidad and Tobago's heritage. Tuning pans is an art few have mastered. The Department of Mechanical Engineering is doing research to find new and more efficient ways to create music pans. 
If these experiments succeed, it could well alter the profile of steel band music in years to come. Meet Addison Workman, a structural design engineer who received his training in the Faculty of Engineering. While working in Barbados, his job is to design the inner structure of the building so that it will stand. Addison Workman is just one of the many UWI engineers who are working to build a stronger West Indies. was Workman's Country, Barbados, which was to provide a third campus of the university. In 1963, the first classes were held in these makeshift buildings in downtown Bridgetown. 118 students enrolled in degree programs in arts and sciences. By 1967, the new buildings at Cave Hill were ready for programs which have grown to include arts, education, and the natural and social sciences. The man on the left is Ralph Carnegie, a graduate of the university who is Dean of Law in a faculty that was born in 1970. This building is undoubtedly the architectural showpiece of the entire university. This faculty of law marks the first attempt to give all attorneys a grounding in all aspects of law as it affects the West Indian community. UWI is people serving people. Next time you hear a weather forecast, it is very likely that some of the information was supplied by the Caribbean Meteorological Institute in Barbados. The institute is now associated with the university and students can study meteorological science for a Bachelor of Science. Principal of the institute is Jeffrey Rudder, another graduate of UWI. Like most independent states, Barbados has its own currency. The signature on all its bills is that of Dr. Courtney Blackman, the governor of the Central Bank. After leaving UWI, Dr. Blackman distinguished himself in the field of finance and was appointed governor in 1972. Every nature, forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting. What we want to know is... The teaching profession is stronger today forward. because of people like Muriel Gill, one of the many graduates who staff our schools. Let's take it in our own language, in West Indian language. Our mineral resources are potential sources of wealth to benefit all of us. The university helps to provide manpower with expertise to exploit these resources. People like Pete Fenton and Everett Nelson. But at this time, the university is predominantly concerned to serve the interests of the rich and to keep the poor in a helpless and downtrodden position. I think this is a rhetorical excess. I am not able to say, um, you know, much more that, right? <laughs> so it's not all that bad, but it could be better. In 1974, as in 1948, when the university began with medical classes, there is still a great need for doctors in every country. The University Hospital at Mona, which opened in 1952, is the leading medical institution in the region, thanks to many of the UWI graduates who have remained to work and to do research. The medical school has earned international respect. The students have been taught to a high standard, and some teachers have done research, which has attracted outside interest. One such project was the identification and the classification of the illness known as vomiting sickness, which is now listed in medical journals as the veno-occlusive disease of the liver.
provides premium medical care for patients from across the Caribbean. The Medical Museum exposes students to all types of malignancies that can affect mankind. Before any heart surgery is done, each patient is examined in this cardiocatheter room. Catheters are inserted into the body to establish accurate diagnosis for cardiac abnormality. Three times each week, different patients spend three to four hours under the eyes of cardiologists, who can watch simultaneously the organs of the patients as they appear on a video monitor. Operations on animals help prepare students and faculty to handle surgery on humans. It is this kind of dedication and research that led to the first open heart surgery on a human being in 1967, making heart valve replacements available in the Caribbean. You are looking at the heart of a 12-year-old boy as doctors prepare to close a hole in it. This machine takes over the function of the heart and lung during the operation, which can last from 6 to 12 hours. Every fortnight, doctors at Mona repair defective hearts in an effort to save lives. This is the only hospital in the Caribbean where open heart surgery is done. This is Sylvia, one of the many young people affected by poliomyelitis. Through the untiring efforts of Professor John Golding of the medical faculty, the Mona Rehabilitation Center for Polio Patients was built on the Mona campus. Skill training will allow most of them to lead useful lives. Medical care in the Caribbean is dependent on people like Dr. Junior Wong, who studied at Mona. We need more doctors. We also need more food to match population growth. Meet Alma Elliott, an applied chemist who is studying the effect of chemicals on the nutrient status of banana soils in the Windward Islands. You know, many a worker has a difficulty of one sort or another. Trade unions have helped to improve the lives of all of us. Carlisle Dunkley, a social science graduate, is president of the Caribbean Mine Workers Union and island supervisor for one of Jamaica's biggest unions. His protection at the workplace. The quest for knowledge is at the heart of the university's activity. Professor Wilfred Chan has dedicated his life to research and teaching. One of the many graduates who are now professors, Dr. Chan, did all his degrees at Mona and is now head of the Department of Chemistry. Three campuses are alive with athletic activity. Sound minds work better in sound bodies. UWI has produced men and women who have made valuable contributions to sport. One of these is Mervyn Morris, who has played for Jamaica and the West Indies. Morris is also a poet, and he lectures at Mona. The batting artistry of David Holford, captain of the Barbadian cricket team. All-rounder Holford has played for the West Indies and as a professional in England. 
All Caribbean countries have benefited from the applied research done by university staff. One of the more important tangents of UWI is the Regional Research Center, which was opened at St. Augustine in 1963. Extensive soil surveys and land use evaluation are done with the cooperation of government agricultural bodies. The staff agronomists work in different islands doing field experiments with food crops and make their findings available to interested parties. Complementing their work in food production is the research of Dr. Oliver Headley in developing solar stills which provide a cheap and reliable source of distilled water, solar dryers for agricultural produce, and solar heaters for hot water. The object of his research is to find a single design which farmers could utilize. We are always looking for better ways to provide more food. At the Port Royal Marine Lab in Jamaica, Peter Reeson, a UWI grad, heads a fisheries research project which is investigating the growth and the population density of commercially important species of fish. They test new types of fishing traps and identify the spawning season. They also check the number of eggs produced and the death rate of the young fish. It is essential for every country to seek to produce... One of the many graduates in politics is P.J. Patterson, attorney at law. In 1972, he became Jamaica's Minister of Trade, Industry and Tourism. ...natural resources. Tourism is one of our biggest money earners, and its development is guided by graduates like Winnie Risden, who is Director of Public Relations for a country's tourist board. The poetry of Derek Walcott. Because of his writings, Walcott was awarded an honorary doctorate from UWI, the first graduate to be so honored. Castries and St. Lucia is Walcott's hometown. Countries like St. Lucia benefit from the work of the Department of Extramural Studies, which has established university centers like this one in eight states. Residents can pursue examination courses which fit into the framework of the university curricula, providing preliminary training for degree programs. Other subjects of special relevance to the area are also taught. The libraries at these centers are open to the public. Development of creative arts has always been one of the main concerns of the resident tutors who run these centers. three campuses provide evidence of activity in creative arts. The students and the public use this center at Mona, while graduates help to create Caribbean art. Uncle Time is a old, old man. Dennis Cott, poet and writer. And shake the coconut tree them quiet like with him sea wind laughter, scraping away the land. My uncle time is a spider man, cunning and cool. Him tell you, watch the hill and you see me. <laughs> see you, yeah, no quick enough. You see how he move like mongoose man. You think him fool. My uncle time smile black as sorrow. Him voice is soft as bamboo leaf. But Lord, my uncle cruel. They have no hockey over in India. They don't know about curry and Nutella. They do not sell oysters like in Quebec. Oh, dance for what kind of food? And Africans cannot be still banned. Most of them never see a pan. Man only you, the Trinidadian. So about Obia man. So that is right. Yeah, you will find the right thing. Believe me. 
The mighty Chopta, Carib Sonia. You live in like a coward and break in your heart. And then, you know, pause. Slade Hopkins here, playwright and theatre director. I want you to come. I want you to get that kind of shift from, an electric shift from the violence of your disapproval to the basic tenderness that you feel for him, right? Okay, try that again for me. Rex Nettleford, artistic director and a choreographer of Jamaica's National Dance Theatre Company. Nettleford is also director of the Department of Extramural Studies and head of the Trade Union Education Institute at the university. In 1974, Aston Preston was chosen to be the university's fourth vice chancellor. The social role, in my view, should always be secondary. That is not to say that it must be forgotten, but we must remember constantly that the primary role is one of scholarship. This is the only way I think the university will survive in its reputation of a place of first-class learning. I think the University of the West Indies will survive, um, even if it breaks up into three constituent colleges, it will survive. The question is, who will it survive to benefit? That's a very difficult question to answer. We will have to um, be able to build the kind of structure at the University of the West Indies, the kind of curricula which will indeed produce people with a subtle mind and with the capacity for distinguishing between what is real and what is fake. I don't see any um, great changes happening. I think it will just continue as it is. I see disintegration. This problem of insu insularity comes up over and over again. Um, but it will survive, and I hope that there will be enough common sense to allow the less developed territories to make use of whatever um, resources the other centers have. In fact, it might not be a University of the West Indies any longer. We might well, in fact, have separate universities in the West Indies. As to whether this will happen, I think only the governments can decide that. Already, one can see tendencies on the part of some people towards the breaking up of the institution. Some governments claim that they are unhappy with what the university is doing. Some governments perhaps are aspiring to creating their own national universities. And I think if, if this ever happens, it would really be a tragedy.